All right, so you got all your resources and you're ready to start studying. What do you do first? The first thing to do is to take a practice examination. And I'm going to use this opportunity to discuss how I think you should take the exam and how you should analyze it to, in a systematic way to maximize your studying going forward. Um, and I also recommend starting with the score builders or therapy ed practice exam. Each book will have three. Um, I, I recommend starting with either one of those and not with the PEAT. I recommend saving the PEAT for a little bit later. And the first thing is when you're taking the practice exam, it's extremely important to take it in a real testing environment. Don't have your phone out. Don't be sitting on your couch watching TV. Don't obviously use any resources. Don't have the internet open. Taking it like Take it like you're taking the real NPTE. That way, you not only have a better understanding of what it feels like, but also you're increasing your test-taking endurance, which is going to be something I'm, I talk about in, in future videos. But that's really important with the practice exams. It gives you an opportunity to increase your endurance to sit there and answer a lot of questions in a row. So that's, that's a big recommendation. So how do you plan out when to take your exams? So take one at baseline, whether it's score builders or therapy ed, to be honest, is a little bit arbitrary. I think you should take one at baseline, one at week one of your studying. So obviously the study plan is going to be different for everyone if you're in clinical or not. But I just did what I did, 10 to 11 week study plan. Um, and I recommend taking two early on and then studying for a few weeks without taking a test. This way you could work on your test taking endurance closer to the exam. So that way when you get to the exam, it doesn't feel like that long of a test because you've been doing it for the past six weeks. Okay. Um, I know some DPT programs want you to take the PEAT early on for their own good to kind of see where you're at. But for your good, <clears throat> I recommend taking the PEATs a little bit later. Uh, take it at week five and then take the other one, you know, seven to 10 days before the actual NPT so you can really see how you're feeling and then use that last week to tighten things up. All right, so you take your practice exam in a real test environment. And now you're going through each question, and that's vital. Go through one through 200 or 250 on the PEATS. You have to go through every question, whether you got it right or wrong. Almost take the exam again, pretty much. And then I want you to split it up into four categories, okay? <clears throat> so if you got a question correct, obviously you either knew it or you guessed and got it correct, right? If you got a question incorrect, right, you guessed, you didn't know it. I'm going to skip the 50-50. Or you feel like you should have gotten it right. So you look, as soon as you saw the answer, you were like, oh, I knew that. You know, I wasn't thinking clearly or, or whatever the case may be. But when, 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 you when you're taking the exam and you get one wrong and you look back and you say, oh, my God, I should, I should have gotten that right. I know that. No, I promise I know it. You know, that kind of thing. Then you, then you check it off as should have. And 50-50 are, are, are questions that you, you didn't guess necessarily, but you weren't 100% uh, confident that you should have gotten it right after you saw the right answer. So they're kind of just the, the miscellaneous ones, I guess. So I think that you should organize an Excel file. This is what I did for my practice exams. And split it up into a complete guess. You just didn't know the material, 50-50 weren't really sure, kind of miscellaneous, or you know, once you saw the answer, you're like, I should have gotten it right. Okay, so this is an example from one of my practice exams. Obviously, it goes down way further, but I was just uh, giving an example here. And usually, it took multiple exams to actually see some correlations on where I needed to focus on certain things. Okay, so the reason that I break it up into, um, I knew it, uh, I guessed it was 50-50 or I should have gotten it right is because that's really what's going to drive how you study in that specific area. Okay, so like I said, you're going to go through the ones you got right. If you knew it, you're also going to study the wrong options because you, you have to know that. You don't know if it's going to be asked differently if you're asked again on the test. If you guessed, obviously you just didn't know that specific content. So you're going to study the content. 
Um, and if you sh feel like you should have gotten it right, it's a little more complicated. Now you're talking about enhancing the test taking strategies because it was in your brain. You knew, you knew it once you saw the right answer, but for whatever reason, you weren't able to connect it in the test taking environment. Okay. And for 50, 50, um, if there's questions that you just, it was 50, 50 on, you kind of want to enhance both the test taking strategies and the content itself. So really it comes down to studying the content and increasing test taking strategies. So now we're outside the practice exam a little bit. We know what questions we're lacking in content content, and we know what we're lacking in test taking um, strategies. Um, so the rest of the presentation really is going to focus on, on these two things because this is how you're going to study going forward. So content, um, if you're getting questions wrong or you're guessing, obviously you need to work on memorization techniques. You have to be able to apply information that you learned uh, and you have to be able to reason clinically with that information that you have. Um, for test taking strategies, obviously you want to reduce your anxiety as much as possible. Um, you want to increase your test taking endurance because that could uh, um, fog your thought process if you feel like you're not thinking clearly because you've been sitting there for a few hours. And obviously you want to clear your thought process so you are thinking clearly even if you answered 200 questions, you're still, you're still sharp, you're on top of it, and you're thinking clearly.